Hi everyone, my name is Alexis Kimmel. I'm the brand director for Method of Sun. And both of our teams wanted to welcome you all in and thank you so much for coming to hear our semester long project, this campaign. So in this presentation today, we're gonna to introduce ourselves, tell you about the task at hand and who we're involved with our campaign, our key insight and our journey to resolve, and then we're gonna wrap it up and do a QA and a at the end. So we are the brand team, and my name is Alexis Kimmel, the brand director. Oh, I'm Will Tazza. I'm on the Consumer Insights team. And here we also have Arielle, Anna, Caitlin, and Grace with us. And then I'm the account manager for Tay Agency. My name's Landry Quinn. We have Emily, who's sitting over there, and then... <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I'm Brady Seekley, and I am the strategy and planning director for Tay Agency. I'm Nick Chan, and I'm on the creative team for Tay Agency. All right. Okay, so I want all of you to look at this picture and take a minute to think back to your childhood. Those nostalgic memories of your mom or your dad putting on your sunscreen before you can enjoy a day at the beach. The sunscreen usually spent most of its time in a cabinet locked away somewhere in your house, but every time summer rolled around, you could count on it to be there to protect you for any recreational activity under the sun. In this day and age, we have a lot of influence of the idea of skincare. It's become a huge trend, and it's all centered around the idea of having a routine and taking care of your skin. Our campaign relies on the blend of the idea of nostalgic, reliable sunscreen and trendy, everyday skincare. So we want to define Neutrogena Sun Care in the context of our campaign, which is the convergence of sunscreen and skincare that provides a consistent barrier against the daily intake of UV rays. Sun Care is an SPF product meant to be used daily, rain or shine, to maintain healthy skin for now and in the future. So I'm going to pass it off to Will to talk about the task at hand. Thank you. So now we're going to move on to the task. So um, at Tay Agency and Method of Sun, our goal is to develop an insights-driven campaign for Neutrogena Sun to promote daily SPF usage and increase market share for the 18 to 24 year old moderately involved skincare market. So with our current market demographic, we kind of target that um, older, more mother-like influence with our mo more older products. And with this campaign, we hope to get on the level of 18 to 24 year olds, college students to that more desired market demographic with our more newer products that promote that idea of daily SPF. First, we've had several focus groups throughout the past couple of months. Um, and we wanted to showcase a couple of key highlights from these. These are from 18 to 22 year olds right in our target market. And um, they kind of showcase kind of the obstacles that we were going to kind of have to approach head on through our campaign. So ideas such as, if I do use sunscreen, it is just whatever is around my house or what my mom bought. Or I only know sunscreen is important because my aunt is a dermatologist. I started using sun facial sunscreen every day because I kept seeing it on TikTok. So we start to see this idea that sunscreen is maybe something that is low involvement or there is an outside influence that is influencing these people to wear sunscreen. Let's visualize this. Going off of these focus groups that I just talked about, in addition to surveys, that same 18 to 22 year old range, we asked them, if they agree with this statement, I just use whatever sunscreen is around me, such as what is in my house or what my friends are using. We saw 39 plus 27% is around 60% that either somewhat or strongly agree with this statement. And this reinforces the idea that they are being influenced by an outside source and that sunscreen is perhaps low involvement for most people. Um, to complement this, when we look at these influences, we also ask these same group of people, does anyone in your life encourage you to wear sunscreen daily? And we see a stark half and half with um, about half saying yes and half saying no. And then to complement this, we see um, in the consumer behavior, is sunscreen SPF included in your morning routine? We see very similar percentages um, saying yes and saying no. So for example, those who said that they are influenced um, by other people um, more, were more likely to have that sunscreen SPF in their morning routine, or those who said they weren't necessarily, like had a low level of influence, um, did not include sunscreen or SPF in their routine. 
So these influences range from people such as people's mothers. Um, some people had um, ties to dermatologists within their family, or it could also be um, um, skin cancer prevention or um, also skin cancer history within a family as well. And then you also have um, a small portion that are unsure because this connects back to the idea of not being educated and that idea of being low involvement. Now we move on to the who. So meet Danny Miller. She's 21 years old right in our target market and she's a full-time student and part-time worker. She's also a PA resident. So um, Pennsylvania is a landlocked state. So at some points, she you know, is only maybe an hour away from the beach, where at other times she can be several hours away from the beach. So she brings very diverse perspectives and experiences from childhood and her relationship to sunscreen to the table as we analyze her. Also, so like I mentioned, she is 21 years of age. So in her past, she was in high school. And that's like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., a block of time where she's in the classroom during the day, a very set schedule. When Danny also looks into her future, she, she sees a post-grad 9 to 5 job, which is very similar, um, a large block of time, but instead in the workplace instead of the classroom. When it comes to Danny's current undergrad life, this is completely open-ended. And um, she does not have just one block of time where she's sitting somewhere either doing work or doing schoolwork. You might think Danny's schedule looks something like this, um, something very simplistic on the surface. So say she wakes up, you know, goes to a cafe, goes to lecture, gets some work done, socializes a bit, and goes to bed. But this is actually not the case at all. You see, Danny looks down several times during the day to, on, to her phone and sees text messages from family and friends with a lot of things going on. You know, her class got canceled, now she has an opening in the day, or she, her friend wants to go on a lake trip this upcoming weekend, or her friend's car just got towed, or her friend got locked out and needs her help, or her friend wants to go get coffee in the morning. So now, you might think Danny's schedule looks like this, as we see these diversified um, groups of text messages that she is receiving, almost slotting spontaneous activities into her day. So you might think it looks like this, but maybe this. But actually, it looks like this. So we see that she has to add all of these spontaneous activities into what originally was a planned day. So whether it's grabbing that cup of coffee with her friend, whether it's having a picnic because class is canceled with her friends, going to a club meeting she forgot about, or supporting her friends at a fundraiser as well. Just like, um, just like her um, daily routine and her schedule, online influences are also something that is very spontaneous in her life. So when she goes on her phone, similar to the text messages, she goes on TikTok, for example, and sees reminders to wear sunscreen and SPF daily, sees um, companies such as ourself, Neutrogena, talking about retinol and wearing SPF, sees videos talking and educating about anti-aging, sees comedic relief such as dudes will wear sun shades inside but won't put on sunscreen, and then also the traditional educational aspect of videos as well. So um, what does this mean for kind of Danny and these pain points? So. You know, Danny is very overwhelmed. Um, you know, she's a full-time student, a part-time worker. She has a um, very busy schedule throughout the day. Um, and going back very quickly, it's very important to note that sh this, she's being influenced by her friends um, to kind of go on these, you know, spontaneous activities. And while she is overwhelmed as a college student, you know, um, while so much is planned, um, she's kind of living in micro moments, making decisions on the fly. So this actually is enhancing kind of, she views this as a good thing, um, enhancing her college experience, having these spontaneous activities, while it does look overwhelming on the surface and keeps her very busy throughout the day. Because she's so busy, um, sunscreen is not necessarily relevant in her um, 
daily life. So she grew up with sunscreen <clears throat> being kind of a background figure, being that mother-like influence where she was kind of told or influenced to wear it, or she commonly associates it with events such as the beach or being in the sun for a prolonged period of time. She is very interested in kind of trends, though, in sun care, in daily sunscreen, but also kind of lacks that education and where to start as well. These two ideas of being overwhelmed and not relevant ties into her college budget as well. So Danny takes investing her money in something very seriously, so she puts a lot of time, effort, and getting going through research and also going through several opinions before making a decision to invest in a product. And when she does invest in that product, she wants to see um, the guaranteed results. With these pain points being considered, we came to the conclusion that Danny needs affordable and reliable products so she can be prepared while, li while living um, spontaneously. By spontaneously, we mean your week is planned out, but there is still so much that is unplanned. And in order to be prepared, in order to be confident in herself, she needs that reliable product. And because she's a college student, it also needs to be aff affordable because no two days are the same in Danny's life. We hope to take you on a journey through the, these, um, Danny's pain points, the online influences, in order to work towards making Neutrogena more relevant in Danny's life and our target market. So I will now pass it off to Brady. Thank you, Will. So in a moment here, we'll take a look at how brands like Neutrogena and competitors are perceived as being relevant in the daily lives of people like Danny and people like Mind of the Hurt. So before we do that though, we could take a look at the definition of relevant. And the dictionary definition is the quality or state of being closely connected or appropriate to something. As we were thinking for our campaign, how can we create this connectedness and appropriateness, we developed our own secondary definition that we believe is gonna help us create this relevance within Danny's life. The definition that we came up with is the state of being involved in the lives of consumers through messaging, providing information to alleviate pain points. As Will just walked through, Danny is constantly exposed to online influences, and we think that if we're able to meet her on these online influences and provide the information of how Neutrogena's son is able to be affordable, reliable, and help her be prepared for spontaneity, then we are gonna be able to be relevant to her. With this in mind, we'll take a look at the spectrum of relevance that's showing where brands like Neutrogena and competitors uh, lie within the minds of people like Danny in terms of being established, but also being relevant. Within the relevant circle of the Venn diagram, we have brands like Supergoop, Sunbum, and Hawaiian Tropic. We believe that these brands have been very good at leveraging trends in recent years. Um, this is both with their products and their social media presence, and this has allowed them to really resonate and uh, be relevant within the lives of our target segment. In the established circle, we see Neutrogena and also competitors like Banana Boat, Coppertown, and Cetaphil. Uh, for us as Neutrogena, we're extremely happy to see that people are perceiving us as being established. This means that people think that uh, Neutrogena is consistently able to provide reliable products, and it also shows us that we've been able to weather trends throughout the decades that Neutrogena has been around. But within this inner circle here, we see that CeraVe and La Roche-Posay are both perceived as being established and relevant. So what this means is they're also considered uh, to be reliable and consistent, but they have messaging that's successfully reaching and resonating, resonating with the target segment. <clears throat> here we have some examples of how exactly they do so. These are TikToks created by influencers that are showcasing uh, CeraVe and La Roche-Posay products. And here, this is exactly what we mean by meeting our target segment online and uh, explaining to them the value of these products and how it can alleviate their pain points. And these TikToks also show us how successful this tactic can be. Some of these uh, have upwards of 300,000 likes, which is definitely a lot, uh, especially for TikToks talking about sun care products. So our goal with our campaign is to change the perspective of Neutrogena from not only just being established, but also to being relevant. We want to make sure that we're leveraging the fact that Danny already perceives Neutrogena as being consistent and reliable, but we want to meet her where she is online and through messaging and show that we can be affordable, reliable, and help her be prepared for her spontaneous schedule. Before we map out exactly how that messaging is going to look, we have a couple other things we need to consider, like price point. 
Uh, here we could see new, where Neutrogena falls in comparison to competitors uh, with sun care products, price points. Uh, on the high end of the spectrum, we have Supergoop. Some of their everyday sun care products can go for $40. And on the low end, we see Cetaphil that can have products as inexpensive as $7. Neutrogena, all of our sun care products are in the range of about $10 to $20, which is a price point that we definitely want to stay at. Throughout our focus groups, we found that uh, price point can be really emotional when it comes to purchasing. We found that people, um, especially when it comes to things that they're putting on their face, prefer to invest a little bit and feel as though that they aren't putting something that's cheap or maybe not worth it for their face. Um, but also it's important that we have an affordable price point because we're talking about everyday sun care. It's going to be a habitually bought product and if the price point is too high, it's easily going to be out of the range out for someone like Danny. When thinking about the exact products that we want to be focusing on through our campaign, we have to take a look at what Neutrogena offers. So they obviously offer skincare products and sun care products. We're focusing on the sun care side of things. And specifically, we're focusing on the face products that are meant to be applied daily to protect from the UV rays on a daily basis. Some of these products include uh, face liquids, serums, and lotions. And the ones that we'll specifically be focusing on include the Mineral UV Tint, which is a relatively new daily face sunscreen that comes in a variety of different shades, as you can see up here on the screen. It's formulated with vitamin E, which protects from things like aging, wrinkles, dark spots, all things that Danny values. And we will also be focusing on the Invisible Daily Defense, which comes in the forms of lotion, uh, face serum, and body spray. We specifically will be focusing on the face serum because it's really lightweight. It can go in your makeup, provides a nice glow, and it's also moisturizing at the same time. Once again, all things that Danny values in her skincare products. Now what I'd like to do is walk us through how we developed our key insight, which is really the driving factor throughout the messaging in our campaign. So about a month ago, whenever our teams had collected a really large pool of data, including primary data, secondary data, uh, focus groups, interviews, we knew we had to brainstorm and really hone in on what our key insight is going to be and, what that, and how that is going to drive our messaging. So one of the first questions we asked as we were looking at this data is why are people practicing sun care every day? What's it providing for them? What value are they helping to gain? Why do people invest in these products? And then as we looked at the data, we came to the conclusion that it enables the most prepared version of yourself. When people wake up on a daily basis and they're taking an active step to benefit their health, and they know that they're gonna be protected from the UV rays of the sun all day, it creates a feeling of preparedness that they wouldn't have if they weren't practicing their everyday sun care. Then we wanted to dive even further and we asked, why does preparedness matter in Danny's life? What do her days look like when she's feeling prepared versus not feeling prepared? And once again, what value is this providing for her? Once again, the data showed us that being prepared allows her to have the freedom to do whatever she wants within a day. Whenever Danny feels prepared, she isn't being held back um, from achieving her day to the fullest, and she feels way more uh, likely to be able to handle what happens in her everyday schedule. So at this point, we had developed an insight that we think really showed us why people were utilizing everyday sun care and what they were gaining from it. But we wanted to couple this idea with another insight we had, which was the dynamic between the schedule and spontaneity of Danny's life. So as we mentioned, Danny wakes up, she has somewhat of a rigid schedule, she has her classes, her daily responsibilities, but also there are things that go unplanned every single day. Plans are made, plans fall through, and nothing really goes as expected. So with these two insights in mind, we developed our nugget of insight that is wherever your day may lead, be in charge of how it starts. So as we mentioned several times now, Danny may never be able to uh, predict exactly where her day is going to go, but every single morning she can take charge, practice everyday sun care, and then experience the preparedness that this gives her and go about her day to the best of her ability. With this insight in mind, I'll pass it off to Nick, who will talk about our journey to Resolve. Thanks, Greg. So within our journey to Resolve, we want to first tackle the media plan and the four stages of awareness, consideration, conversion, and loyalty. So firstly, within awareness, we want to analyze um, you know, several social media posts, as well as influencers and introduce a brand new campus rec program. 
So here we've got some drawn up um, ads that could be posted on the Neutrogena page. So on the left, we've got showing off the mineral UV tint product as well as some of its various benefits like anti-aging as well as UV ray protection. And then on the right, we've got sun care being you know, relevant in people like Danny's life, how it helps her feel confident, how it helps start her day, and it allows spontaneity within her plants. Also, Danny is someone who's easily influenced and within the, uh, the influencers that um, have the content that she looks at online, we could introduce PR packages, we've used some really bright colors, and we think that these are some products that Danny would really enjoy. We've got Sunrise, Sun Care, Sunset, and these go along really well with the colors of Invisible Daily Defense. So here are some influencers that we think kind of embody who we want um, Danny to be following. We think that you know there's a mix of micro influencers like Hallie Kate and Lexi Luxury, and then some larger creators such as Hannah Maloche and Julia Amato. So now we'll get on to some uh, streaming platform pause ads, which are features on you know, Tubi, Disney+, Plus, Peacock, Hulu. First we've got Don't Pause, Neutrogena lets you live without missing a beat, showing off, of course, the mineral UV tint face liquid. We've also got in the time that you've been on pause, you could have already applied your daily sun care, speedy, simple, staple. And of course, Neutrogena's invisible daily defense is show-stopping. And like many of her friends, Danny, of course, loves to listen to music. We found that over 50% of young adults under 29 report streaming music daily. So another way that Neutrogena has people like Danny covered is being with her every step of the way, whether it's getting ready in the morning, whether it's um, winding down at night, whether it's on an unexpected rainy day, We've got music for life's moments. Examples such as you know, picnic vibes, spontaneous drives, but also nighttime relaxation, as well as you know, impulsive road trips and midday study sessions. So now we'll talk about some in-person activations and sponsored events. So of course, for the past few weeks, um, Coachella was going on and Neutrogena had the opportunity to be the exclusive uh, skin care and sun care sponsor, was, which was an absolutely awesome opportunity for the brand, and it gave them so much um, uh, exposure, and it's really awesome for them to be able to you know, help the people at Coachella get out of the, the hot California sun and be able to in engage with some of the Neutrogena products, as well as you know, learn more about the dangers of uh, not wearing daily sunscreen. But then we wanted to take that event at Coachella, which is you know kind of a dumb thing, and how we can establish relevance within the future uh, for our, that same target market. So we're going to do that by introducing our campus brand ambassador, our campus rec program, starting out in Big Ten schools. So as we touched uh, a little bit on before, land, um, Danny, people like Danny are from Pennsylvania, which is a landlocked state. And people who've grown up in landlocked states, the idea of sunscreen isn't necessarily ingrained within their daily routine. I know me personally, I grew up in Pennsylvania and sunscreen's always been on the back burner for my daily routine, which kind of differs um, for people who've grown up in you know, really hot and sunny states such as Arizona or California. So starting out in Big Ten schools can help establish the importance of wearing daily sun care to people like Danny. Um, so going off of that, we found that you know, melanoma rates are highest within landlocked states, states such as Iowa, Minnesota, Big Ten schools. We think that this could be a really great opportunity. So 
So within our campus uh, rec program, students can sign up to be campus brand ambassadors and engage in things such as you know, tabling on the hub lawn where um, they can be there with a table with several products. We see the Invisible Daily Defense, the Red Neural UV tint, and sort of help talk to students about the importance of using sunscreen daily and talking them through um, Neutrogena's various products. Additionally, we think that it would be really cool if they had something like a, spon a wheel of spontaneity where students could um, you know, come up and spin a wheel and one of the things on the wheel would be just doing something you know, random or spontaneous like going up and talking to a stranger or making a TikTok on the hub lawn. So things that people wouldn't normally be doing. We could get um, you know, students to help do those really spontaneous things and help engage them. Additionally, we think it would be a great idea for the campus ambassadors to run a localized Instagram page to help engage with the students that they're talking to and help give them you know, a direct platform where that student can you know, reach out with any questions or concerns and talk to that uh, same person that they, they met on the hub line. So here's a short example of something that a campus brand ambassador could do. It's kind of a trend on TikTok where they go around you know, college campuses and ask um, questions to students. So for example, Landry here is asking the student you know, to walk her through her outfit. So, walking through the outfit, and then they can also ask them questions about, you know, their sunscreen habits. He's got the dogs out. There you go. So, <laughs> this past week, Valley Mag launched a social where they um, gave all of the attendees, um, you know, a small like, goodie basket where they've got a bunch of products here, like. Um, Saxby's Coffee, but they've also got some skincare products there, and we think that this would be a great opportunity for the campus brand ambassadors to include, you know, maybe the Invisible Daily Defense or the Mineral UV tint uh, within the bag. Now we'll get on to um, some Neutrogena consideration ads. So, going back to our nugget of insight, wherever your day may lead, be in charge of how it starts. There is no better way to begin your day when you've got Neutrogena by your side. And sun care, or sunrise, sun care, sunset, Neutrogena is with you every step of the way and the constant within your everyday plans. And now we'll get on to how we'll be able to convert our customers and uh, maintain loyalty. So we've got some more ads. On the left, we've got uh, the best tainted, tinted face liquid with SPF showing off the various shades of the mineral UV tint as well as on the right, we've got showing off the Invisible Daily Defense, Radiate Confidence, and Game Control. So now we wanna uh, make a small revision to the current Neutrogena Rewards Program. So we know people like Danny are well-connected. She's got lots of friends around campus. So wouldn't it be great if she received discounts for referring her friends to Neutrogena's care program? or even if she received a small flight discount on purchases for you know, people like her or her friends. And of course, if she really likes a product and she kicks it out to her friend and her friend purchases the product, both her and her friend could receive a small kickback with product referral rewards. So now let's talk about how we're gonna conclude this presentation today. We think that the most important elements to remember are the fact that when you start your day with Neutrogena, you are prepared for anything. That is the whole idea of using this, um, these products, rain or shine, is the fact that if you're putting them on anyways, you are prepared for no matter where your day leads, whether it becomes sunny, whether it stays cloudy, SPF is a necessity every single day. Next, we also believe that maintaining relevance is the key to the 18 to 24 year old market. There's so many things that we are taking in every single day. The only thing that's on the top of our mind is whatever we're seeing constantly. That's the most important way that we can be in the minds and the mouths of our students and young adults. And lastly, young adult purchase decisions are widely driven by others' influences. And that's why we believe a very person-first approach to our creative and our social media accounts are very important, such as the brand ambassadorship and other in-person events rather than 
simply online events. Um, and that's also the reason that we use the pause ads rather than a video ad. Many times when you're watching TV, you're with friends, it might pause on that TV. We want people to be talking about this product and be influencing others. Because skincare is a very personal decision, it takes a lot of effort to purchase that product. And usually that effort comes from an influence you found from somebody else. At this point, I would love to think back to that original photo that we saw at the very start of the presentation of the young girl having sunscreen put on her face. We want to keep that grounded, nostalgic feeling that Neutrogena has had always. They're obviously a very consistent brand, a very trusted brand, but we want to spring them forward into this target demographic by using each of these three key elements. We believe that this is the best way to have people use sunscreen every single day rather than have it locked away in their cabinet for most of the year and only brought out once or twice. Just remember, the only things that should be consistent every single day whenever you're young and you have all the time in the world is your sunrise, sun care, and sunset. Thank you. Sorry, pause, but thank you so much. Um, we appreciate all of the alumni for attending. We appreciate you all for watching, and we're here to take any questions. Oh, stop share. The red button toward the top. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to go first again. Yes, for please. Brand comment. Um, so, brand team, I think, again, great job. Um, I really liked how in the first half of your presentation you sort of contextualized the consumer. Um, but using quotes to showcase the influences and mindsets from the focus groups. I thought that was great. I think the text messages um, and then the perceptual maps around sort of price and relevancy I all thought were very effective tools in sort of grounding us like where the consumer is today, specifically in relation to perception of our brands versus others. So well done on that. Um, I loved the social posts and I think Sunrise, Sun Care, Sunset is sort of like a very catchy, concise sort of slogan. Um, and then getting into some more of the tactics, um, really loved the TikTok campaign and the fact that you guys actually went and created some TikToks, always very fun. Um, influencer recommendations, I think those are really helpful. That's something you see a lot with our agencies, like our PR agencies will be like, here are like the types of people exactly that we would recommend. Um, which is always really helpful for us as a brand team to make sure that like we get it right if we're actually going to move forward with an influencer deal. Um, the show stopping ad that like was appearing on I think like some sort of streaming, I laughed when I saw that because that was actually something that when we did our new IDD campaign this year, one of the first concepts from our agency was almost identical to that. It said unskippable sunscreen instead on like a skippable ad but it was like essentially the exact same concept. Um, so great work there. You are thinking just like our agency, which is honestly very impressive. Um, I thought, love the tie to Coachella and sort of like, what does the next evolution of that look like, potentially through a brand ambassador program? And then I liked how you tied spontaneity and that sort of live activations and college kids. Um, I thought it was all very relevant. So especially great job on, on all of the tactics, on the way you guys presented. Um, very impressed again. So, great work. I can jump in. Um, amazing job. I know I was chatty in the, in the side chat because I, I was definitely blown away um, with all of your tactics. I agree. I love the pause ads. Um, there were a lot of moments where I'm like, yeah, this makes 100% sense. If I saw this ad in the wild, I would be influenced by it or um, I would like click to learn more about it. I think that you guys did a really good job with all of those, um, all of those pieces. I have the music playlist, the Hulu ads, the influencers all written down and like starred. Um, the playlists are really cool because it is a way to show the brand's voice and imagine like listening to like a cool um, playlist curated by Neutrogena and someone asks like, hey, did you make this playlist? And you'd be like, oh no, so weird. But it's by Neutrogena. They just really have good spontaneous playlists that I listen to when I'm doing my makeup or doing my skincare, or like getting ready to go to a picnic or, or whatever. Like I think that's kind of cool um, and not an obvious way. Um, a lot of brands are, are 
in the market right now, which is kind of cool. Um, I also loved, I know I comment on it, but I love that the focus groups you like had three insights and like I believe them immediately, like the three quotes and like, oh yeah, that makes so much sense. Then the next slide goes into like, okay, well then here's like big data on how these like insights are actually like present in the marketplace and you could actually put a number and a percentage to how many people actually think that way. It's not just one person who is vocal in a focus group. Um, that was so hard hitting and believable and it made um, me trust you the rest of the presentation, honestly, not that I wouldn't trust you, but um, as a skeptical client, you can see that you're very thorough in your homework and um, the way that you came up with your insights. Um, the one thing that I wanted to shout out, I know you did this with the other group because it was just something so small, but the fact that you guys have, both teams have really gone really deep. Every single image, picture, word has been thought about, edited, critiqued, and thought about again before put on these slides. And so much so when you showed the PR package and it had like the little, um, the little hair headband thing, we talked almost like a whole conversation about how the headband could go to influencers. It has Neutrogena on it. Those headbands are so popular in Get Ready With Me TikToks. And that's just like another way that you could do branding. Like every, again, every little thing and an item that went into these presentations were really um, thoroughly thought about. So kudos to you guys, amazing presentation. Thank you, everyone. That's a great. I'm wondering if anybody else on our call wants to, I know we're kind of at time, but if, if anybody else on our call would like to make any comments, I know you're filling out forms, but. We do have a couple minutes. Great <laughs> <laughs> um, job to everybody. Those were super fun to watch. Um, I wanted to comment on the TikTok component specifically. So I work on our beauty and care team um, here in Austin. So work with a lot of SPF brands and have seen many of those that you mentioned um, in my time here. Um, I really like the idea of, of course, including TikTok as part of your mix. Um, and I think a big component that I'm always talking about with brands is kind of like how are we educating users on why they should pick your brand over all of the other competitors out there. There are so, so, so many, especially if you were to walk into Target or if you were to walk into Sephora. Um, so not only getting users to add SPF into their daily routine, but then how do we get them to select that specific Neutrogena one? Um, and some things that like I personally see in my feed are those oil sheet comparisons where you're seeing you know different ones side by side and how, how oily they are throughout the day. Um, or like how a product pills and kind of like messes with your makeup throughout the day. Um, and I personally have been trying to find my, my perfect facial SPF and the smell of some of them bother me, the packaging bothers me. The pilling bothers me. So there's a lot of different angles I think you can spoke, focus on within the product specifically to make sure the users are aware of why that Neutrogena one is the best one on the market. Um, so yeah, just a lot of different angles to bring to TikTok, but otherwise, great job and thank you for including me. So thank you so much. I know a lot of you are pros kind of in this area and I'm very aware of the times. So I know some students need to get to class.